your champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. Now, can you do that? Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm Booker T, six-time world champ, two-time Hall of Famer. Got my man Brad Gilmore here with me. Today, guys, we got a big, big show. A, big, a really, really, really big show here for you today. But we got a very, very special guest host that's going to be here with us inside the Hall of Fame today, getting his champagne wishes and caviar dreams, man. Let's bring him inside the hall right now. Let's get Maven inside on the hot seat. What's up, Buck? Hey, hey what's, what's up, Brad? Up? How you feel, on, man? man? How you feel? You look I'm, good. You look good, I'm, man. I, I'm always up for some champagne wishes. I'm always <laughs> ready for them. Caviar dreams, man. Absolutely. You know, you got, we got to get all in it. Man, you you look, I mean, you know, you, you know what they tell us, you know, like the late mate, you look radiant. <laughs> you know, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm serious, man. You still got that, you know, like, uh, you know, the movie life with um, Martin told uh, Eddie, you know, you need to, you know, you know, water the, you know, flowers, you know, to give them some exuberance. You know, that, that's exuberance. exuberance. That, that's what you got right now. I, I'm serious. You, right. still, you still look the same, man. You still smiling. You know, how you feel, man? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. And just like in the movie life, I carry a, a, a pocket full of rocks just so I can accurately count. <laughs> no book i'm I, yeah i'm doing good and likewise you still uh not only do you still look uh, amazing but you still just have that i mean that personality that literally just exploded backstage especially with someone like me coming in and just blazed a trail for me you still have it like you know you haven't you haven't let any of your successes you know stop you or or even impede your desire to to get more so congratulations on everything you got both I'm, I'm always working man i'm always working you know we have, we had a, a sin on the show you know all my life grinding all my life yeah, you're grinding all my life. I've been grinding all my life. <laughs> she got a roll tight. <laughs> you know, so that's that's what we all about inside the house. Yeah, you know, I swear, man. Uh, I I never um think about the past a whole lot. I really don't. Yeah. I, I've never been one to you know think about the past and you know the the way it was, you know, back in the day, stuff like that. Just because I'm still trying to do so much, me and Brad, you know, we out in Vegas a lot, you know, covering the fights and we, and we have like so much fun doing that. We're doing the show and the podcast as well. And, and life is just like fluid, you know, with the, um, the wrestling school, the, um, the wrestling promotion and, and then still doing stuff, you know, with WWE NXT. Um, it, it's a, 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 I'm mean, like, I'm like hustling, bro. I'm like hustling. And I, and the thing is, it was so easy for me. And that's what I'm getting close to, um, you know, asking you a couple of questions, but it was so easy for me to walk away from the, the wrestling. I swear, yeah. man, it was like, man, I'm like, I'm, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but I'm at a stage right now in my life to where my retirement kick in next year, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one contemplates actually retiring. And I say, you know, what would I do? <laughs> I never thought I would get this far. I swear to God, I never thought I'd get this far where, you know, Max Lane, you know, you know, investments. Wow, it's kind of crazy. Um, but for me, um, this stage of my life right now is so hard for me to want to walk away from what I'm doing now. Cause it's right. so fun. I'm enjoying it um, so much. Uh, you know, how much do you miss, you know, that, that life being on the road? Yeah. Uh, all right. I miss it. Yes. But I know a man has to know his limitations yeah. and you talk about, you don't look back much. I heard a, a saying once, uh, you know, you can't drive a car looking through the rear view mirror. And I, you know, mm. I, I've always looked at, I'm trying to find what my next, uh, challenge is going to be. I think you're the same way. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with with the life I've lived up to this point, but you know that doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying to achieve. And you know, I I have a goal set for what I'd like to achieve, but 
new goals, you know, find me you know, week in and week out. So I do miss the life. I miss backstage, man. I miss the, I, I you know how you know, football players say they miss the locker room. Yeah. Well, that's what I miss, you know, and I don't miss airports. I don't miss rental cars. I don't miss hotels. I don't miss late night restaurants. Those stuff I could do without the, the you know, the, the time right before you go through the curtain, and you see, you, you you feel that reaction, whether positive or negative. I miss that, and then I miss being backstage with the guys, the laughing, the cutting up. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely because even if I go to like an indie show or a smaller show now, I see the younger guys that have it, and they have the inside jokes that I'm not privy to. Yeah, and I'm a little bit envious when I uh, when, when they when they have them. Yeah, um, you know, that's a couple of things. Um... You know, people always talk about is, you know, the, the locker room, you know, what it was really, really like, you know, in the, lo in the locker room. Yeah. You, you was one of those young guys that was coming up in the locker room and you had guys in there like myself. You had guys in there like Bob Holly. We've heard so many stories about Bob Holly and, you know, and how he was with young guys coming coming up. How, how you know, from the tough enough, yeah. from the tough enough thing all the way to you finally, you know, won that thing to, you know, getting on the, the roster and and then actually having to go on the road. How tough was it really for you? Because you was like out there, you was out, you was all by yourself, man. You ain't had no, yeah. you ain't had no buddy systems, no clicks, and none of that kind of stuff. You know, um, you know, an inside guy pulling strings for you. Um, no. What what? How tough was it for you? Because I was listening to Re Rene Dupree talk about um, him being in the WWE. At, at such a young age, yeah. how tough it was for him dealing with that that part, the backstage locker room, not the ring, just the, right. the, the guys in the locker room. And the guys could be just like kids, you know how it is, but how tough, yeah. how tough, how tough was it for you? It was it, the training and all the wrestling stuff aside, because that's just, you know, if you, if you don't have it in you to do that, then wrong business for you. But what the, the tough part was for me was just proving to, to you, to all the other guys, not that I belong because I, you know, time will tell if I belonged or not, you know, but it was just that I deserved to be there, you know, because I came in in a different way. My first, I, I, I dare to say not many people's first match ever. First, my first match was on SmackDown with Taz. Look, you were my fourth match ever, ever wow. was you. And, you know, that's a, you know, that's, and, and knowing the way guys were going to view me and you brought him up, Bob Holly, Bob, and here's what I can appreciate, you know, cause Bob gets the, 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 the title of being a bully yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. You know, that could, could not be further from the truth. Bob makes you earn your spot. And in that business, if you don't earn your spot, then you need to be doing something else. Bob yeah. makes you earn that. And I, and I can appreciate that. I did, I would say once I was on a house show, full house show schedule, I think I did three weeks, you know, day after day with Bob. And Ooh. the maddest he ever got at me was not hit for not hitting him hard enough. But <laughs> at the end of my run with Bob, I had earned Bob's respect, which to this day now, Bob and I are, are, are great. And it was almost kind of like a rite of passage. Yeah, you know, like once I got it got past that I earned Bob's respect, it was kind of like, all right, you you belong here. Now it's just time to learn how to wrestle, yeah. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> yeah, I tell you, when I uh, when I first got the WWE and uh, uh, I got a chance to meet Bob Holly, he was always had that look on his face. Yeah, he always had that scowl and. Like he was hadn't eaten or something, you know. And it was, <laughs> my thing, do it. No, I'm serious. That's the way it would look. And um, I, I remember uh, one of the first times I, I really got close to, to to Bob. I said, "Tonight, I hope I got you because I'm gonna eat your ass up tonight." Yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait to get you in the ring. I, and I just was dogging. I'm gonna just dogging him all day. And um, and it, it, it was almost like. He thought I was crazy. <laughs> I said, I got it. It's like being in prison. You know yeah, what I mean? You think that prison mentality. Just, yeah. I'm on the bunk all night just sitting there looking. You know what I mean? Make sure. You know, every, 
Roast food, bro. Alcacel, so make it coming. We gotta take a break. We gotta take a break. Hey, one second. Stick around, guys. You're the Hall of Fame special guest host, Maven. We'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, dig it, dig sucker? It, sucker. And this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about sex. Hey, you remember when you was always ready to go? I'm talking about strapping the rocket on it, man. Going straight to the moon. I'm talking about getting it done. If you want that extra confidence, I got something for you. Listen up. Blue Chew. Dot com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at the fraction of the cost. But the great thing, Book, is you can take it any time, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, You'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, guys, it's all done online on the internet. So there's no doctor's visit, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at a pharmacy or any of that. And the thing is, book Blue Chew's tablets, they're made right here in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package so no one is the wiser. You know, let's just get it out there, guys. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. It's like this. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew absolutely free when you use promo code Booker at your checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping, man. That's BlueChew.com. Use promo code Booker to receive your first month absolutely free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And, you know, we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the Hall of Fame podcast. Chew it and do it. Ah, welcome back inside. Book, the Hall. book, I don't have a clue how you're even funny in your advertisements, but you are. <laughs> Chew it and do it. I'm sitting here dying. <laughs> I'm sitting here just cracking up. I've never listened to an ad more you know, intently than I just did. Chew it and do it, ma'am. Yeah, and, he, and he's like like taking me back in my head because he starts off telling a story. He's like, yeah. guys, remember when you was always ready? And I'm like, yeah, I do remember those yeah. days. <laughs> but hey, but, but you can, you can attest to this. Man. Look, I'm <laughs> strap a rocket to it, man. <laughs> Book, you're Maybe talented, I'm... dude. You're talented. Man, it's just stupid, man. That's all. Yeah, that. yeah, I, I, I feel like, you. Up. You know, I was just talking about being in jail, man. I learned a lot when I was in jail. God told me uh, when I was in there, he told me, uh, young blood, when you get out, you know, you don't want to come back. He say, uh, you know, if, if you act like it nine times out of 10, people will believe it. He, and, and, and I took that, man. I was like, wow, you know, it just was a great concept. And I remember um, working for this guy, um, as Bruce Gassage was working at this warehouse. And he had a buddy who was an actor and, um, he came through, he used to come through all the time, just hanging out at the warehouse. And he told me, hey man, I got some people that are gonna be coming in town um, um, in this um, Chuck Norris movie. And uh, why don't you go read, read these lines for it? And I said, man, I, I've never done that before. And he said, just just go and try it. They never, you know, they don't know that. And uh, I went and read uh, for that movie and boom, a couple of weeks later, I got a, a call from Paramount Pictures and I got the role. That's awesome. and I was like, wow, you know, and, I, and I, from that day forward, I say, you know, you just got to act like it. You got to make yeah. it feel like it. And that's that's been one of my greatest assets. So when when I, when young people out there, when you find yourself in, a, in, in that place, you know, um, you know, you don't actually have to know how to do it. You just have to act like you know how to do it. And if you do that very well, uh, man, magic can happen. And, and, I, and I say yeah. that because I'm living proof. My my day job. What, what were you laughing at? Man? <laughs> I'm laughing because what you said could be applicable to our last ad. If you find yourself in a position, magic could happen. Just chew it and do it. Chew you it. You know and what I mean? It. Just chew oh, it. Oh yeah, it. man. Be ready. Yeah. Strap a rocket to it. Strap a rocket on it. Go straight to the moon, man. <laughs> you know that's wrestling talk right there, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, absolutely. You know. Look, you, what you were talking about. So my day job, I actually work on Wall Street now, and me and my owner of my capital firm, we laugh all the time because we, 
like we're we think we're idiots and we're we have a saying we're like man fake it till we make it because we have all these big companies that are coming wanting to do business with us and yeah i'm suited up and i looked apart and half the time I'm like, I don't have a like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'll find out. I'll find out for you. I'll get an answer. I'll get an answer for you. Yeah, they'll be asking. They'll be like, so what's your uh, what what's your ROI look on that? Look look like for the I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> they can, they can make it, brother. I get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> looks good from my perspective. It looks yeah, real good. Absolute, from my absolutely, absolutely. I can hear down, but I'll get it's it out. I'll be back to you. <laughs> oh my God, man. I know we got a lot of uh, super chatters out there. This is the final week uh, for the big contest. We've got a big contest going on where somebody's going to win a, a big, big trip to Reality of Wrestling in December, Christmas Chaos Show. Um, all, all expenses paid uh, by Reality of Wrestling. I, I, actually, it, it's coming out of my pocket. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. but, but we're going to make sure we're going to. Uh, do something really, really cool. Uh, drawing going to be closed off today, right, Brad? Today. Today's the last one. It's the last day. So you super chatters, you super chatters. I know you're out there. Know you want to get inside the Hall of Fame and get your champagne wishes and caviar dream. Just stick around, stick around. We got Maven in the house, y'all. And uh, we got we just got to chop it up a little bit. I was, I was, um, my thing is, um, uh, like I was talking earlier, as far as I'm not a, uh, like a past guy, like always thinking in the past. I know you want to get in there, Brad. Uh, no, I'm, not, no, I'm not one that I uh, want to get, uh, you know, thinking about the, the past a whole lot. And I was like, man, Brad and I, we was talking uh, as far as, you know, you and I and matches that we've had. And I'm like, man, I, I, I can't really remember because I just didn't remember matches. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not, until I go and watch it. So I had to go back and, and uh, do a little research and pull it up and I go, and I beat the hell out of out of me. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got me. You got me. You know, but I was just wondering, was was that you know uh that experience uh you know in the ring with me? Because what I what I noticed was the the difference between that Maven at the beginning and the Maven yeah. at the end. The Maven at the end was just as big as I was on that night. <laughs> he was, hey. <laughs> you know, but, but but how 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 was that experience? You know, uh, actually getting in the ring with me because I know how it was for me when I got a chance to. Yeah. But I don't. But I don't know how, how big of a how big of a fan first. How big of a fan you was as a as a kid? All right, I I was a big fan of. I grew up in Virginia, and I watched Crockett Promotions. So I was a big fan of like NWA. Uh, big like you know, like the horseman time, like that was just my stuff. I didn't really watch, I watch, I would watch WWF like Saturday night main event. But as far as like, like watching the programs, I grew up watching TBS and and you know, those studio shows they would put on. Yeah, now yeah. as for watching you, fortunately for me, I grew up with two older brothers, I was the youngest of two two older brothers who beat the hell out of me growing up and they, but they taught me a good lesson. And what they taught me was keep your mouth shut and just learn something throughout anything. And eventually one day you'll be where you want to get. And then you'll be the one that'll be able to pass on information. But working with you, I think we only worked together that one time. Yeah, I yeah. mean, maybe in like maybe we were in the ring in like a battle royals or well, something I, I, like it was, that. It was a tag match we had when we worked together against uh, Matt uh, Matt Hardy and Mark Henry. See, I don't even remember that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, and I, I'm like you. I'm like I remember because you were my fourth match. Um, shoot, I didn't even have wrestling gear at the time. But I, I was such a fan, and I was just so just happy to because I knew the opportunity I had. I knew that when they started tough enough, you know, there was no guarantee. Like nowadays, you go on a reality show, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars per episode. Yeah. All well, no, nah, we made three hundred dollars a week during then. But what what they did offer us was an opportunity. Yeah. And so being in the ring with you in my fourth match ever, thinking the year before I was a school teacher watching you every week, 
honestly, you could have laid it in a little harder and I still would have been happy. I still would have been honored because you know why? As soon as we got back behind that curtain, I still remember looking at you because it was in December, it was around Christmas. And I, I still remember looking at you and I was like, was everything okay for you? And you went, hey, man, great, man. And when, <laughs> when, and when I got you to like, just be happy with, working with me yeah like man i had a great christmas after that book awesome, man. like seriously like i was i was honored i was honored to be on there just like yeah. the other day when you called me and asked me to be on the show how long did it take me to say yes uh no, no time no yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly hey, man, that drop kick was sweet though the drop kick hey. was- <laughs> the drop kick was great man all right you want to you can I, can I got time for a 30 second funny story about yeah, that? Man. all right so literally the only move i had <laughs> so I I'm in WrestleMania 18 wrestling gold dust go out there we set the whole match up hardcore title whole match is built around with um him having the gold pa- painted trash can and the, the spot was I was going he was going to you know stagger turn into it I hit him with the drop kick and that would go into our finish but I threw the drop kick and I don't know how cuz he's holding a trash can I missed him by a foot and a half how the heck, like, and what made it worse was I get out of the ring. I roll, you know, finish the match, go backstage thinking 72,000 Toronto Sky Dome. I just wrestled. I hope people don't realize I missed the drop kick. Yeah. Well, what, what am I going to do at this point? Get behind Gorilla. Vince lays into me. Vince is like, you got one move, one, and you missed it. And I was like, oh, God. You got one, and to this day, uh, I still laugh. You got one move, and you missed. That's all you got. You got that drop kick. You got Can't one. You got one move. <laughs> no, uh, we 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 were popping because we were watching y'all's match from Raw, it was December twenty first, Raw in oh one, ah, and you yeah. hit the drop kick yeah. once. It's beautiful. I go, oh, book. There's the drop kick. You go for it a second time, and book just swats you out of the air. I'm like, book, yeah. that's his only move, man. That's it. Don't bury him on his move. That's it. That's I've it. never seen somebody get swatted. Yeah, it's just like, come, I mean, I mean, hell, I was happy I got that. And, uh, and, when, <laughs> and uh, when I was researching, yeah. the reason why we had that match because I was mad at Maven because he laughed at me because of the, the party. Stone Cold Steve Austin grocery store fight. <laughs> Yo, still, honestly, if. For everything that I've seen in wrestling, and oh, you asked God. about how big of a fan I was in college, me and my roommates, I lived in a baseball house. We had two TV set up. It was before the days of flat screens, the big cabinet televisions. Yeah. And we would watch Monday Night Raw oh, and then good. Nitro on top of it. And book still to this day, that grocery store scene. That's my favorite segment in any wrestling show of all time. I still <laughs> You at the end of it saying, I'm going to get you is the funniest <laughs> damn thing. It's just yeah. and the way you and the way you and Steve just just work together. And hell, I don't I, I want to uh, know what supermarket yeah. said. What supermarket uh, said? Yeah, come in here and beat I, I tear this that, place up. That uh, I know we got to take a break, but uh, that uh, that finish right there was, you know, me crying. I'm saying I'm going to get you. That was the same way I used to be when my brother used to, you know, like beat me up. And my yeah. mother, my mother was at work, and I used to be telling him, "I'm gonna tell mama, yeah, I'm gonna tell buddy, help you." <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> so Let that's me, what, hey, that's what I had to draw you, back on. <laughs> did your mom have the same rule my mom had outside, just not in the house? No, nah, man, I was, do, not I, was the baby, I was the baby in the family. I wasn't supposed to get touched. <laughs> oh, mine, mine was fine with me getting touched as long as I didn't knock a face. When my, mama, when my mama went to work, everything went out the window. Yeah. Everybody used to beat my ass. I'm serious. Likewise. I'm serious. That just was the game. We had to take a break. Hey, uh, stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, dig it, dig sucker? It, sucker. 
All right, everyone, it's Booker T and Brad Gilmore here, and we've got something exciting for all you sports, comedy, music, and theater fans out there. We're talking about game time, the fastest, easiest way to get your hands on tickets to your favorite events. That's right, Book. We love all those spontaneous, unforgettable moments, and game time is here to make them happen. Whether it's a last-minute decision to see a game or a sudden urge to catch a live show, game time has got you covered. Covered, giving fans access to tickets even at the last minute in over 60 cities across the United States and Canada. And guys, this ain't about getting in. This is about getting the best seats in the house. With game time, you can see images of your seat before you buy it. So no surprises there, guys. You can score tickets swiftly. Skip the line, guys. Just dive straight into the moment. Absolutely. And listen to this. Game time guarantees the best prices. Find tickets in the same section in row for less elsewhere, game time will give you a credit of 110% of the difference. So there's no reason to wait, Book. So whether it's the thrill of the game, the laughter of the comedy, the rhythm of the music, or the drama of the theater, guys, don't let the opportunity skip by. Choose game time. Grab your tickets and just enjoy the moment. Live should be spontaneous, Book. So guys, don't miss out. Check out Game Time now on their app or at GameTime.co. That's Game Time. Time.co. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Booker for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Lowest price. G guarantee. Oh yes. Boom. I'm, I'm downloading the Game Time app right now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Promo code Booker. Make sure, make sure you use the code, man. <laughs> you know, blue chew everything. Make sure you yeah. use the code at your checkout. <laughs> you know, get that. I got a lot of shit to do when I get off here. I can tell you what. <laughs> got some work. Put some work. A lot of stuff I got to get. <laughs> oh my god, man! Oh. You know, book talked about. Uh, hey. Sorry, book. I didn't mean to cut hey, you off. No, no. Book talked about how you know he and I go to Vegas and the last time we were in Vegas we were going to get something to eat and your name came up I was talking to, to Booker about your channel and I said man I was listening to Maven talk about his channel he said something really smart and and, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here you said there were a bunch of wrestling channels that would uh that they had YouTube channels about wrestling but you were doing a, a, a you were making YouTube videos instead of just clipping out wrestling content it, yeah. That was the the way you came up with your channel and the idea. Tell people kind of the genesis of that and what you mean by that. Yeah. Well, all right. So, and by the way, like if 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 I was a, a white guy, I would want your hair. Just throwing that out there. Like that's the best like quaff I've ever seen in my life. I don't know Appreciate how you that, get man. it to stay there, but that's what I would want. Bluechew.com. Yes. Chew it and do it. <laughs> yeah. Well done. It's everything stand up. <laughs> so the genesis of it, I'm not a name like Booker. I'm not a name like Austin. I'm not a name like Haker. So I know for me, a podcast would never work. I would have 120 reliable weekly listeners, and that'd be about it. And most guys aren't a Booker, a Steve, a Taker. So we better find other ways if we want to be out there. I had a guy contact me, and um, it was funny. I was doing uh, Matt Cardona's podcast, and I and I was like, I was like, yeah, I had some guy named Mr. Beast contact me, and they were like, what? And I'm like, nah, it's not him. But <laughs> I had a I had a YouTuber contact me, and he threw a pitch out to me. He said, listen, he's like, wrestlers do it wrong. Wrestlers put out a podcast, and then they talk about what interests them. And listeners don't care what in, listeners don't care about that time you were riding through Peoria and you stopped at a Perkins and they you know, dropped your food on the floor. Right? Listeners don't care. He's like, well, what I want to do is we want we're going to make YouTube videos that deal with wrestling with the, everything from the subject, from the title through through the thumbnail. I'm taking these ridiculous thumbnail pictures that I'm like, God, like I wouldn't do this. Like I wouldn't put this in my, in my album on my phone for nothing, but he, they work. What can I say? And 
that's the whole genesis of it. To, and even touch on subjects that maybe other guys won't touch on. But the one thing I do and the one thing I stress to him when we started, I said, we're, I'm not going to out anybody and I'll out myself. But if I'm going to tell a story, it's going to be my story. Like I can't tell Booker's story. I can't tell Randy Orton's story. Yeah. I can't tell one of their stories. I can tell my stories and I'll tell mine. But I, I want I, I don't want to be a, a, another site that's just dogging people or bad mouth in the WWE or what the hell I, I watch the product now and I they, they can't do anything right yeah. it, incorrect incorrect so and we agreed we did about a month of planning and then you know it's just been a constantly evolving thing I it blows my mind that it's as, as successful as it is but I mean I'm I'm saying this to to Booker who is you got a gazillion more followers but uh, <laughs> no bro no no you got you started off and you done it the right way. And yeah, the thing is, uh, you you likable. Um, people 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 grab radiant. Yeah, you. Yeah, he's, he's radiant. He's very he's, radiant. He's exuberant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. And, and people like that. I mean, uh, you talk about the. Um, that's one thing that I hate on today is, and I and I talk to Brad about it all the time. Is when someone is telling somebody else's story. Yeah, and it's Me like too. it's like, bro, that's not your story to tell. Yeah, um, that, if that person is not talking about that, that's not something that you should even remotely even be thinking. And I see that so much today. The where, where these guys are having those kind of, and I'm like, okay. Uh, and, 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 and what what I don't get about it is, it just make you a person that you know. After all these years, if I would have never heard that. I would have never thought that way about you. And and, and, I, and the reason I, and the reason I say that is because I go back to the, the story with Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff and I, we go back all the way to WCW. Yeah. Eric Bischoff is someone who watched my back and uh, made sure that I was pretty much protected in WCW. And then when the dark side of the ring um, came out, yeah. Uh, and they was talking about it, and and they was talking about they had a vote. And, and who should be the champion and unanimously everyone said Booker T should be the champion but Hulk Hogan was coming back and Hulk wanted the title and Eric Bischoff was going to roll with Hulk and what he wanted not with what I wanted even after a unanimous vote and I go wow I never thought that about Eric Bischoff I, I, I thought this guy was there protecting me yeah. I say after if, if I wouldn't have never saw that on dark side of the ring I wouldn't have never known and I go yeah. wow so it just totally can ruin the way you feel about uh, the way you felt about someone after all those years. Yeah, a hundred percent. I don't. It's hard to watch some of those. Like yeah. I watched the uh, I watched the episode with uh, with with uh, Candido, and you know, then I'll go talk to some of the guys who was in the ECW with them, and they're like that. Uh, yeah, some things were they got accurate, but then it's just some things they totally miss on. And like, have you seen the movie The Wrestler? With, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, with, yeah. with Mickey with Mickey Rourke, what a great yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some things that are accurate, and then there's other things that I'm just like that. That was never my experience. Yeah, and, you know, and I just I don't I never wanted to be one of those people telling a story that isn't authentic to me. That's well, it. Well, the wrestler, I think that story was the story of the the wrestler that was at that went all the way to the top, but just wouldn't. Wouldn't leave. Wouldn't. Yeah. What I what I always say is, if you don't know how to change with the times, the times yeah. will pass you by. Absolutely. That's what that. That's I think what the the, the wrestler represented. And, and after that, I saw so many guys like that when I yeah. came up. So when I went and watched the wrestler, I was with Charmel, and uh, the um, the final scene came where the Ram went up to the top rope, you know, and he got himself mm -hmm. together and he. Was getting ready to come off the top, you know, and, and you know the fans are going, you know, and then boom, he comes off and it go dark, and the credits start rolling. Yeah, a, a tear rolls down my eye, and yeah. I go, and I go, baby, let's go. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough for me too. He needed that one last pop and book. Don't think I didn't see what you just did. Book wanted to get those guns. He get his arms like, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Look yeah. at yeah. it. Look at <laughs> it. I noticed the same thing. <laughs> Tell him, Book. That's 220. 
five pounds of twisted steel and open scoping, grave digging, destruction, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I watched the wrestler and it was tough. Like it was tough. And I knew when he went up and got that one last pop that he had he that's what he was looking that's what fueled him. And and I I definitely understood that. I I'll, I'll be honest with you. The fact that I never got to a, a point in my career like you book it, it made moving on a whole hell of a lot easier. It made being able to adapt and to 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 take on new challenges and new you know, forms of it, whether it be entertainment or in the the secular world, or it, it made it a lot easier. Because I, you know what? Hey, maybe if I did, maybe if I did headline four or five WrestleManias, it might be a whole hell of a lot harder to leave and not have that rush anymore. So yeah, because yeah. trust me, on my channel, I get reminded all the time that I was just a mid Carter. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah I know. Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> People tell me I was a mid Carter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I get a, so you, you can't uh, worry about what people say on social media. The best scene in that movie, The Wrestler, for me was when he was working at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he was getting himself together. And then he, he was getting ready to walk down the hallway. And then he could hear the people going, wow. Ram, Ram, yeah, Ram, Ram. And then he gets to the curtain, yeah. you know, and they still holler Ram. And then he opens it, and then walk out and go to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh. yeah, go go stock shelves. Yeah, no, nah, he went to go <laughs> cut the meat. You know, he was working yeah, in the yeah, yeah. and I was like, God, man, that was just a. Yeah. It was so real. It was so yeah. freaking real. And and I, I gave those guys uh, big props because it, it was even one scene up in the movie um, because I come from that era to work. You know, it was a lot of drug use. Yeah. Um, guys were getting hooked on those somas and stuff like yeah. that. And that's what it kind of represented a lot of that world that I that I actually see. And it was one scene in the movie where the guy had some pills and he had his pill bottle. And, and before he opened it, he shook it. You yeah. know, and, and the guys back in the day, they used to know how many pills they had. Yeah, they gauge it. Just, just by the shake. Yeah. You know, I mean, we getting low. We, we, I got yeah. it. It was one of those type of things, you know. So yeah. I swear, man, that movie was so accurate. And Mickey Rourke played a hell of a role. Played and another, role. and another amazing thing about that movie, like wrestling is 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 kind of hot right now. Like to do other stuff other than you know the the, the big three. This was back what in like two thousand and nine ish when there wasn't much other than you know WWE. There wasn't much many people touching wrestling. Yeah, around that time yeah, yeah so for them to make a a big budget hollywood movie at that time for an untested market i mean that's that's a set of brass ones that i come in no and yeah Mick, mickey rourke got in such good shape he did a hell of a job and, he did a yeah. hell of a job he played a hell of a role i mean he was so authentic as far yeah. as the, the wrestler go of the 80s yeah, um, I swear. Um, I, I watched it, and that, that's why for me, kind of like it's goosebumps just just think because it was such a good uh, produced um, and directed movie. Yeah, uh, everybody's role was so um, you know authentic and and so true to the way it really right. is. When you go from a major league to the minor league, especially when you go ask the kid down the street, "You want to play Nintendo?" <laughs> 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 and, the, and the kid go, and the kid go, "Have you ever played Call of Duty?" He goes, what's that? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's almost like he got to a certain certain point and, boom. and then and then never, never yeah, wanted to leave stay there. Went to stay in 1985 forever. Yeah. Yeah, one of those type yeah. of deals, man. We got to no, go ahead. Go ahead. We got quick, going back to with the channel and Brad, this will answer a little bit more. I was a little bit like that. It, like it took a lot for me. It took me a while to uh, to embrace social media and to embrace you know just the, the but i was like man i'm too old i've always said it book i've always said like if they would have had a twitter and instagram and all that stuff when like during our time yeah like in the early 2000s um i'd have 10 bazillion followers if yeah. i could have had that, that i would have lost my mind if we had yeah. our stuff back then man. i, <laughs> I, 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 I can say i've said it before i consider myself like the, the last guy to get polio the week before the vaccine came out <laughs> like it just came out just 
way too soon. But I'm trying to embrace it now. Hey, man, you're living, you living your best life right now. We got to take another quick break. Stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame, man. Stick around. We'll be back in a moment, though. You dig it, sucker! You are listening to the Hall of Fame. Here's Booker T and Brad Gilmore. Out. When you come to the WWA, this is what you're going to have to face right here. It's the GI Bro. Well, let me tell you something, Steve, baby. I've been noticing all these big guys like the Super Collider, the Warrior, the, the, the Thor. Well, let me... First come, first things first, man. I got a new haircut. Would you like to see it, man? Yeah, I want to see it. All right. GI oh, Bro. GI Bro is my name. And beat people up is my game. Look in my eyes. Everybody in the WWA, I just want you to know one thing. The GI Bro is ready, willing, and able to take on all comers in the WWA. That means everybody, Thor, Cherokee Warrior, Super Collider, mainly because I seen what you did. You came out and you tore the sign up. You ripped it out of my little private's hand. And you stripped it in two, man. That's something you don't do. You don't mess with my little privates, man. It's a war. Let me tell you, when I get you in the square circle, when I get you in the combat zone, when I get you in the ganking zone, that's when I'm going to declare World War Three on you and take you clean out of the team, man. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that book? 90 what? 92. That's, oh no, I'm sorry, God. 90, 90, yeah, I, 90. The, the, the kid and play, high, the <laughs> Gumby fade you had going on, Wow. <laughs> Wow. You got to change with the times, man. I said, if I still had that flat top fade, that little mustache, I, we wouldn't be talking. We wouldn't, we, wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. <laughs> that, was a great, that was a great time in my my, uh, my my career, man. I was just getting started. I was hyped up. I was doing something uh, I never imagined or dreamt of doing. Uh, and, and I say, wow, you know. It's I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to disagree with you. You would still be doing that, even with that haircut. And you want to know why? You used to have a saying, and I still, I stole it from you, and I have used it for 20 <laughs> years. You used to, and I don't know if you still say it. You remember you used to say, the cream always rises to the top. I still say it on a regular basis. Do you really? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I remember hearing you. you say it, and I've stole, I, I use it too. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, bro. I'm just having fun, man. Ever since that day, man, uh, I haven't worked. Uh, I haven't worked since that day. Yeah, that's what I always tell people when I start wrestling. That's when I stop working. And yeah. doing this has been a dream come true that I have never um, had. But it's been a monster. And, and and the thing is, I'm still having so much fun uh, with with this life thing. You know, that's what yeah. that's what it's about. Trying to stay motivated with life because. I always say also life is the hardest thing you're ever going to deal with in life. You wake up every day, you got to look in the mirror and you got to, you know, boom, you got to go to work. You got to take care of business and it, it's not going to get any easier. Uh, so for me, man, uh, I just embrace it. I just embrace it. I swear to God. Absolutely. Let me, can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. All right. So when we were training, Steve Austin came by the house and he said, they don't pay me to wrestle. They pay me to travel. And I remember because this was, you know, this was back when to me wrestling was like, man, I, like wrestling was hard. Like it was just and I don't mean the physical aspect. I mean, like the psychological aspect. And then somewhere around the 2005, 2000, right, probably right when they released me. I remember it made the transition to where the wrestling was the easy part and the traveling became what sucked. What, what when was it for you? That but that you didn't worry about the match you were having. You knew you were going to have a good match. That you know because I remember, I still remember being backstage for Monday Night Raw, a six minute match, and I'd go nuts trying to remember spots and everything. And I and I'd be stressed out, and I'd be like, "Gosh, why why am I doing this? This is I hate this feeling." Yeah, and then, and then it just went away. Yeah, you know what? I never really had that um uh, feeling. Um, I always felt so comfortable. Um, going out to the ring um yeah. that part was always easy for me the travel was the the, the, the hardest part of the game for me and i felt per, perhaps i got paid for the travel i yeah. hear guys i hear guys you know today and they, they say you know you know wrestlers you know they should have an off season you know and this and that and whatnot 
and and, and it's just not the off season type of business. Nah. It's a it's a warrior sport, and, yeah. and you know what you sign up for when you get into it. Uh, and 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 you're gonna go as 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 long as you can until you drop. Yeah. But, but but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's just like that with every sport. Yeah, just yeah. like that. it's just like that. It, but they they may be taking a little bit more time off. They may you know, but but they may but they may not be traveling nowhere nearly as much as we are. You know, mm-hmm. they may be in the in the gym training um, three months out leading up to a fight. You don't, they may just fight on that one night. You don't see all, just like John Jones, he just got knocked out for eight months for tearing his peck in training. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the guys don't see that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> I, I think it equals out as far as, you know, for me, um, you know, the wrestling was easy. You know, I was getting paid to be on the road all the time. And I remember, um, I think it was beyond the mat. Um, were uh, ninety nine, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where uh, Jake the Snake was talking, and he said, uh, you know, he was, you know, having a conversation with his daughter, and Jake told his daughter, "When you, when you sign that WWF contract, baby, you are obligated to work every day." Yeah. And I was yeah. like, "Wow!" When he said that, I was like, "Wow!" You know. But but it's true. It's true. I, I tell a story uh, when I when I was in WCW, man, it was all beautiful, man. It was like champagne wishes, caviar dreams, baby. Taking <laughs> <laughs> the mail on the regular, you know. I do house shows here and there, you know. But boom, I got a weekend off here, weekend off there. Had a nice little little uh, twenty two footer, you know, a little twenty two foot boat, you know. I'm getting out go every now and then whatnot and then uh in 2001 i, I signed with the wwe and <laughs> and uh, i went to work i went to work yeah and then uh, one day i say i, I want to go fishing i want to go fishing and i get my boat and i took it to get you know the inspection sticker on it and it said 2006. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not lying. I had been working my ass off, and I didn't even realize it. Forgot about. I forgot. I, I forgot. I, I forgot who I was. Yeah. I just worked. Yeah. I'm serious. Well, I heard. Uh, I, I heard uh, Bill Parcell say, "If you leave the huddle in football, someone's going to replace you. Someone's going to go in in your spot." And wrestling is that that to a T. You want an off season? I guarantee you while you're sitting at home for those three months, they're going to be developing another star and you can be forgotten about very quickly in that well, business. Well, you know, so you better be out there grinding. Well, I, I look at it that way, but I look at it a different way. Also, uh, when a wrestler's body get out of tune from being in the ring mm. all the time, that could lead yeah. to even more trouble. That three months sitting at home, letting that calcium build up back up and then going, reopen it, that scar, you know, that tissue and whatnot, and and then taking those bumps, getting back used to that shock all over again after being off for three months. That could be worse for you. I I, I would imagine that could be worse for you than than actually being on the road on a regular. That's just my opinion. That's just my – look here. And I always say, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, you know. (laughs) <laughs> but, but but I I don't think so. Oh, that go ahead, Brad. I, I see you. Oh no no no. Um, oh, I guess. Wait, 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 oh, oh, oh. Uh, hey guys. Uh, before we even get a little bit further, a uh, reality of wrestling going down this weekend. You don't want to miss out. You don't want to get shut out. Um, the new arena is going to be packed. Ninety eight. What ninety three hundred? Ninety three. Ninety three hundred. Emmett. Uh, we just got a new building. Uh, 9300 Emmett L. Flowery Expressway. Seven o'clock bell time, guys. Don't miss out. Don't get shut out. The main event, that main man, my main man, Kenny King, the amazing Kenny King, stepping inside the reality of wrestling arena, and he's going to be taking on the underground king. Oh, yes. Brian Keith, uh, the bounty hunter, is going to. Hey, I guess uh, the heat, the heat is going to be in the house. Not all of heat, the heat. It's going to be in the house along with my main man, Gaspar. Uh, we ain't, I just, I just got to get this, uh, this plug out there. Q, if you're out there anywhere, show up, show up. I got some for you. 
I, I bet not even say it on there. I bet not say it on there. All right, but let's keep this thing. How many super chatters we got over there? We, we, we have a lot and a lot of questions for Maven that I want to get to. But but, but before we get to the super chats, Maven, I did want to ask you this, because I was somebody who I watched that initial season of Tough Enough um, back when I, when I was younger. And when I'm you sorry. In, <laughs> no, I liked it, man. I thought it was so cool that there was wrestling on MTV as a kid. Yeah. You know, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And then you come in. And I was a Maven fan, man. I really enjoyed watching you, especially in the early years. And when did you, though, this is my question, when did you feel like, because we were talking about this on the show, that I think that the way you came in, and Book alluded to this, there might have been a little professional jealousy from some people, like, hey, man, who's this kid? He gets all this TV time, comes right in, getting the spotlight put on him. When was it that you felt like the locker room go went, okay, Maven's one of ours? Yeah, uh, and and understandable. Um, sure. I, I knew going into it, it was an uphill battle. I knew I was going to have to, uh, win guys over. And I knew the only way to do that was keeping your mouth shut, go out there and learn, you know, you know, just listen to what they say. And eventually you let your personality take over and let guys know I'm here for all the right reasons. I would say it probably took about six to eight months of continuously being on the road. Now, the first couple months when I wrestled, I told you, I, I wrestled uh, Taz three times. I wrestled book that December 21st. And then they took me off, you know, and sent me to developmental until I came back. And once I did the taker spot and rumble, and move forward with with house shows and obviously working Bob. I think I I got Taker on my side and I got Bob Holly on my side. And those are two great guys you want to have, you know, that you know saying, "Hey, this, you know, this guy he's got something. I don't know what it is yet, but he's got something." And it was probably 6 to 8 months before I would say probably 90% of the locker room viewed me as one of theirs and not just the kid from from MTV and tough enough. And subsequently, because you're going to be found out really quick. If you're a fraud, I don't care if you're a fraud in any business, you're going to be found out. If you're a fraud in wrestling, oh, they're going to, it's going to come out and it's going to come out and it's going to hurt when it comes out. But I think guys knew, I, yeah, I think guys knew I was there for the right reasons. And book, I, I've, I now see that most of my one liners stem off of what you say because you, you i you, the, what you just said earlier i've said for years i might I, i've been wrong before i'll be wrong again just not today just not today <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, look at I, That's what I, had a, I had a blast and just being able to just being able to to win guys like book like book over it was yeah Hey man, uh, I know we gotta take a quick break. I want to come back, and I know we got some super chatters, but I want to I want to talk to you about um, not wanting to go to the ring and practice. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that might have got you a little, a little heat and might have rubbed uh, rub things wrong way a little bit. Let's let, let's uh, take a quick break. Uh, we'll be back in a momento, man. Stick around. <laughs> Can you dig it, dig it, sucker, dig it, sucker? Hey, book. Our next sponsor of the Hall of Fame podcast is AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day, and I know you're drinking it too. Yeah, man. Um, I received the box in the mail, and, and I said, "What is this?" And this is it said AG1. And let me give you a little testimony. I'm a coffee drinker. I've been a coffee drinker every morning for about 25 years, and I drink a big cup of coffee on the way to the airport, and I get on my flight and I still go to sleep so I, I realize coffee is not helping me at all so I say let me try the AG1 I stopped drinking coffee literally two weeks ago and I, I drink the AG1 in the morning first thing and the first thing I want to do is get in the gym and train um, the body transformation has been unbelievable the energy uh, I have um, I'm going into my day, daily routine has been off the chain so I'm a believer. I'm a believer in AG1. And you know, Book, for me, I was sick of taking multivitamins every day, and I wanted something that was an all-in-one. And with AG1, it's just a scoop in my water every morning. I mix it up, and it's a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to the whole body. And for me, the benefits of AG1, I can tell you I have more energy. I have better digestion, better gut health. 
I have more support for mental clarity and focus. I'm locked in for the whole day since I've been drinking AG1. And they say LeBron James spent $1.5 million a year on his body. You don't have to do that, guys. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Guys, go to drinkag1.com slash booker. That's drinkag1.com slash booker. Check it out. Welcome back. It's out to Hall of Fame, man. Um, I, I, was, I was listening to you, uh, uh, Tiger. I know we got some super channels, and let's get to them here in a minute. Um, I was listening to you talk as far as not wanting to go to the ring and, and practice, and that might have got you a little heat. I remember uh, we used to be on the on the road on, on the uh, house shows. You know, after those house shows, you got a long drive sometimes, you know, 300 miles or whatever. Yeah. And uh, they used to always, you know, tell guys, say, stick around. Ever since I got to WWE, I would always say, stick around, watch the matches, guys. You might learn something. All right. It's, you know, guys, and then that, you know, guys don't do it. And then they have a meeting on, on Monday. And, you know, guys, you know, this guy's leaving. You know, we need you guys to stick around and watch the matches. And, and you know, you, you might learn something. And every time they used to have one of those meetings, because I used to, as soon as the show was over with, I mean, as soon as my match was over, I'd get in my car and just take off. <laughs> and every time they would have one of those meetings, they say, guys, you know, stick around and watch the matches. And I say, well, they didn't say Booker, so they obviously <laughs> wasn't talking about <laughs> And technically, you're not wrong. And so so every time they would have one of those meetings, if they didn't actually say my name, in my mind, I would automatically say, they didn't say me. You're not talking about me. <laughs> I mean, I – Talk to me about I think that. in any court of law, I, don't, I think you're winning in a court of law there. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about that, man. Talk to you me know about what that. it was? It, it, what it was for me, like, A, I stuck around and watched most of the matches because I was riding with Orton. And after I'd wrestled first, second, or third on Raw, well, hell, he was wrestling last. You know, so I was forced to do that. Where I got in my trouble and where I got my heat book was Johnny Ace, you know, the day of Raw. You know, that ring, we get there at one. That ring's already yeah. set up. Yeah. Johnny would cut, he would say, Maven, you need to be on the ring, getting better. And I, look, yeah, it, listen, I don't know who said it, but excuses are tools of the weak and incompetent. I get it. And this isn't an excuse, but I just like, I didn't want to. You know, going to the gym and, you know, getting a workout in seemed a whole hell of a lot better of an idea. You know, sitting in the rafters and, and BSing with the guys and, you know, having fun and telling jokes. Hell, I think one time me and you went and played golf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that yeah. seemed like a hell of a lot better idea than rolling around <laughs> with Fit Finley. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah. I didn't feel like I didn't feel like working on chin locks and and, and hammer locks and, and snap mares. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. hours before my match on Raw. But – that led to me not growing and not getting better. And, uh, you know, as obviously I wish I could go back and do a lot of things in life over. That's not how life works. Go, I, looking back, I wish I would have been out in the ring, just getting better, just making myself better. Maybe getting hell. I don't know. A second move. Who knows? You know, maybe you I would have had a big, drop. Yeah, man. Yeah. Maybe Something I to add to the repertoire. Then I'd have been like, oh, no, man, God, I, I, I learned another one. I learned another one. I have two. I have two. Oh, <laughs> so for, for me, it's just, I, I just wish I would have just tried to, because I, as a kid, you know, I thought I, I thought my my spot was secure. Wrong. Yeah. It wasn't wrong. I, I tell you, uh, it's, it's so different now, you know, like with the video game stuff. Like when I first came to WWE, I, I was a big video gamer. And I used to have like this little portable set. Yeah. And uh, and I and I get the, yeah, the, the PlayStation. PlayStation. Thing with, yeah. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. And, and uh, I was uh, one day I was uh, in the locker room, and I flipped it up, and I'm, I was playing some Madden, Big Big Big, and D'Lo Brown. He came in, and he goes, "Hey, hey, book, you, you mind if I play play around with you?" I go, "Heck yeah, man! Come on down, sit down." Yeah. So him and I would start playing, and we may have gotten not even a couple of minutes into the game, and Michael Hayes walked up behind us, and Michael Hayes go. Oh, you guys playing video games? 
<laughs> and then I, and I go, yeah, yeah, we been just playing the game of Madden. And he goes, oh, okay. And he walked out. No, and he walked off. And I swear to God, Dino's gonna hear this, and he's gonna know it's a hundred percent true. Dino said, "Look, I gotta go." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is going on around here?" I got yeah. I'm the new guy. I'm the new yeah. guy. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm about to get heat playing. You, no one never said anything to me about it, but it, it was definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it was All right. D'Lo came at it the same as me. Like, yeah, you weren't going to get heat. The same way Randy, when I was riding with Orton, Orton wasn't going to get heat. Yeah. You know, we were 30 minutes late to the building. Yeah. If we decided to get a workout in after catering. But I sure as hell was and yeah. did, That's you know. Cool. Yeah. But I own my baggage. I, you know, nobody forced me to do anything. I did it all myself. I, I, you know, I wish I could go back and undo some of those. I wish I would have just went, you know, and, and got, you know, just tried to get better as a wrestler. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Hey man. I mean, you know, 2020 is hindsight. We all do. Yeah. Things. Definitely would. Yeah. I, I know we want to get some super chatters in. Let's yeah. open up the lines, man. Let's open up the lines. Let's get we, got a, we got a ton. We got a ton. Oh, of bird chats <laughs> in the house, man. <laughs> All right. This first one says uh, from the Dark Knight Returns. It uh, says, Maven, buddy, looking real jack. No bread, no water, only meat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know, that's that's, a, that's another question I, I was uh, you know, listening, and you, and you were saying you don't work out anymore. You don't touch weights. And you just do the uh, yoga, the DDP stretch. yoga, and stretch and whatnot. Yeah. What, what was the uh, what was the idea of not using weights anymore? It's not that I don't really. Uh, it's all right, it's it's not that I'm against that. It's just uh, this is gonna sound stupid, book. Like this is gonna sound, but this is how my mind works. I'm just wondering. I've been wondering. Yeah, it, and it's just just how my mind works. Like the fact that I know I can't be all roided up anymore and look the way I used to look. It's I'm either I'm neutral or fifth. I don't have those middle gears. So it's like if I if I went to the gym and started working out again, I would find myself trying to find some Anavar and a couple months of test, you know, or maybe some growth hormone. I just know me. I that's how I work. And with my, you know, obviously I'm sure your your back and body hurts you. Mine does too. For, I have found a stretching routine. It takes me about an hour a day and it keeps my body feeling pretty damn good. And I just, I, I know that that's portion of my life is me being just jacked. Is, it's just done. It's I'm not going to be like that anymore. I don't know if I can do it halfway. So instead, I just I, I I've given myself to just trying to be as flexible and as as you know, stretch as much as possible, just because I know I you know, I know how gravity works and I know how time works. My back's not going to get better, so yeah. I'm just trying to just, just help it. So I'm 46 right now. In 10 years, when I'm 56, it's not even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Book, all of us don't have your genetics, buddy. I know we share I know we share the same last name, but if I took my shirt off right now, I'm not taking my shirt off standing next to you, that's for sure. <laughs> I just came with the doctor. The doctor said you 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 good shape. So I hey, man, I appreciate it, man. But uh keep the super chats rolling. Here's our next one. This is from Vanilla Vanilla Manila. Uh, Maven, do you have any interaction with Jonathan Coachman? Are you too close? I feel like you should do a video together, book or two. Being Coachman, being Coachman, being Coachman, being Coachman. We're not going to be doing any videos. He says, "I like Coachman." Let's just say that I like Coachman. You know, he's 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 good people. He's good people. You know, I, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. I ain't going to go. I ain't going to go no further than that because then it'll be all over the internet tomorrow if I say anything. You know, but uh. But I like uh, what, what, what. What's your relationship with Coach? I mean, I don't really have a relationship now. Uh, I mean, we were. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say we were ever close. We were always cordial, and I. I like Coach a lot, and I was happy. I know he moved on, went to ESPN, yeah. doing the golf stuff now. Yeah. Coach is one of those guys that I mean, he's just he's amazing. You put him in front of a camera, and he's just you know, silver tongued devil. Yeah. Um. I. But as far as like. 
knowing what coach is up to and everything. I haven't I haven't spoke to coach in years. I tell you what, just never tell a story around coach. Uh, ah. Because you know, if you if you caught a, a, a twenty pound, you know, alligator gar, he 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 just caught a whale. <laughs> oh, he's a topper. He's a topper. Is that he's, what you're saying? Bro, he's gonna top you. This he's was, a topper. Yeah. Let me give you, I, I know we gotta take more super chats, but I gotta give this one coach story that he <laughs> that he that he had told me. <laughs> it's just gonna be a good one. You're gonna love this one. Go said uh, there was out of the strip club in Houston, and this uh this and he was talking to this chick, and uh, the chick uh, uh no I mean no uh, uh, no 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 they were they were in Houston, and the Rock was talking to this chick, and the Rock um, said the chick asks, uh, "Where's Jonathan Coachman?" Oh Lord! Um, we have another. So that's like chat. going. So that's like going to. So that's like going to Smith and Walensky and asking if they can run and grab you a Whopper. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want the fillet. <laughs> no, I'm good fillet. on that. I'm good yeah. on that. If you got somebody in the back cooking a hot dog, I'll take that. <laughs> I think those were the best ones. Those were the best stories ever. <laughs> wow. Casanova. Wow. <laughs> we got hey, the, 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 the funny part is, is he probably believes it. He probably <laughs> talked himself into it being true. <laughs> you want to oh. take another one here, boy? Yeah. <laughs> All right, this one is uh, oh my God, from the Will Meister. Everyone is saying the Rock's new wax sculpture looks like Vin Diesel, but my first thought was that it looked like Maven. You know, you I, I saw maybe posted a, a photo with him yeah. in the wax uh, posted. And, and that's another question. You know, uh, I know we got to take a break here in like, like a minute. Um, but um, do you think that may have held you back because you did look so much like The Rock? Yeah, it. you know what? It, it, it probably got my foot in the door, yeah. but then probably held me back. So it was probably a catch-22. But you, listen, hey, every blessing has its little burdens. I'll take it, you know, and I get I get all the time, no matter what I do in the wrestling world, people are always like, ah, oh, you're trying to be the rock. And I'm not, you know. But then again, I think of it this way. They, they could, you know, they, they no one's saying you're trying to be like Savio Vega. You know, so they're putting me in good company. And I love, no, no offense to Savio, but if there's Not one guy, I, if there's one guy that you can, you know, be attributed to being similar to, yeah. I'll take him. Yeah. And no one's being like, yeah, you're trying to be like King Kong Bundy. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll take it. Hey, man. Uh, what I would hey, and that's as close to a wax figure as I'm ever going to get. So <laughs> sure. you'll take that too. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. I just saw that uh, Booker T uh, 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 clip that at promo when I first went to Japan at that time. They were calling me over there. Eddie Murphy, you Eddie Murphy. <laughs> we got to take a break. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. Oh, Matt Damon. Obviously, everyone knows Matt Damon. Yeah, um, Nobs beat him up. <laughs> oh, oh, allegedly. Yeah, oh, allegedly. That's true, that's, true, that's a true story. That's not allegedly. That's Nobs true. actually. Okay, wait, hold on. So I was about to go somewhere else, but we'll get back to the Matt Damon story about Avatar. I've always heard this. They were at some bar where? In Boston? Somewhere. I can't remember where it was. And yeah. and Matt Damon happened to be there, and the Nasty Boys and some of the other boys were there. And what? He and he and Nobbs? What happened? What I, happened? Look, I don't know exactly what happened, but my brother was there. Uh, Nobbs beat up Matt Damon in the, in the bar. And, and the thing is, they probably didn't know who Matt Damon was. Uh, Nobbs and Sags, uh, you know. I didn't know Matt Damon. Was. Matt, Matt Damon was just a kid back then. He was just getting started. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like he was the same guy that played Django. <laughs> or oh, that, that was built on DiCaprio, right? Yes. Well, you know, they both look kind of alike. <laughs> Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. Now, can you dig that? Wait a minute. Is that true? Did Nobbs really beat up Private Ryan? <laughs> That's the alleged that, truth. I don't know. Was that, be, was that before Tom Hanks got him? 
Tom Hanks and all them saved him? Or I've never heard that story. No, this is a, no, this was in a, in, a, in a bar back in the WCW days. Holy cow! No, that, that's a true story. That's a true story. Every time you play that, uh, it make me they, 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 they do look alike. Yeah, <laughs> they, don't, they, don't. <laughs> they do look a little bit alike, man. Come on, you know yeah. that. <laughs> I've never heard that story. That's a great story. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, let me, Look, let me ask you a real quick. Let me ask you a real quick question before you get to the super chats. The one thing that I've noticed in my YouTube page that's been successful is people comment on my ability to tell stories. Mm -hmm. Is that what people love about you? Because, it, like I told you, you're doing a Blue Chew commercial earlier. I'm glued to my seat. You were just telling that story, and I was literally glued to my seat like is your storytelling ability has that helped you get to where you are i, I talked to young people about that uh and i learned it over the years but i remember going to a, this class wwe it made me take uh, when i first got there and I, it was like an eight hour course and i was like i was like man i've been in the business you know 12 years why am i doing this and then about three hours in i was like oh man it's pretty cool i mean it was it was really working my mind as far as how to think um and you know, when we, um, you just say for instance, doing an interview or whatnot, or when we're doing a promo, how to formulate your thought, how to be able to, you know, um, a pivot and be able to tell a little bit of a story, always be able to, you know, animate the story and, and make people feel, because when people are watching, they got to feel a certain way. And yeah. you do, you, you really good with that. You make people feel good when you're telling your story. You're not like every, like I said, you know, you're not, you you ain't got a fucking ax to grind or anything. It's like, even with the guys that you say, okay, the, like the one that I saw you do with the um, the photos, you know, yeah. what, I, what about this guy? What this guy? You know, even if you had beef with the guy, you still know how to make you having beef with a guy sound good. And at the end of the day, it seemed like it just was two guys, you know, more than yeah. any, you know. And that's, yeah. what, that's what that's what I always, you know, you know, try to do with, with, with this stuff is, you know, try to create good stories. You know, me and Brad, yeah. when we first started this show, we say it's got to be a show. You know, it just can't be yeah. two guys talking. Our, our audience has got to be able to have fun. As well as they got to get paid, man, because somebody's going to be heading to a reality of wrestling, Christmas chaos going down. This, so you got to be able to do that kind of stuff right there. <laughs> hell, of a, hell of a transition. Really hell of a segue. Really good. Well, yeah, we do have more Super Chats here to get to, but let's get to a few of them here. Oh man, this comes from yeah, a hit. Is that Euro or is that I don't know uh, what that is. What is that with a P? Where does that come from? What, Maybe what, it works on Wall Street. What kind of currency, what kind of is, currency that? is that? Man? Yeah, yeah, that. Oh my god, hey, again, hey, I'll, 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 find, I'll out. find out. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'm gonna figure out what that ROI is. My, in, says, my internet's down right now, but I'll, <laughs> I'll get back to you. My system's not working. I don't know what happened. Hit Vinny Mac with a bedpan. Yeah, what says Maven Book and Brad and Booker's words looking real good. Good. Boy, You're looking real good. Good. Looking real good. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this one is uh, Joshua uh, Layung. Or I don't know how you say the last name. Maven, been your biggest fan ever since you were on Tough Enough. I'm upset. You don't like your theme song. It's fire. Wish you used the other theme memory by Mercy Drive you were supposed to use. Yeah, like that's, I, I mean, Book, did you have any say over your music? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I um, did. When I came I to did. WCW, when I came to WCW, um, they, they, I, they, I definitely requested it. And and then when, when I was in WWE, they gave me, a, I had to go do this rap song. Can you dig it? Yeah, you know I, I hated it. I hated that song because I, I never wanted to come out to a rap song, and they and they made me use that for about two months. And I went to Vince and I said, Vince, I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I said I need my music back in order to get the magic back. And uh, he actually uh, granted me the the wish of uh, having my music throughout the remainder of my career. Yeah, you see, in just the same way, like if I would have went to Vince with that. I, I, there's a chance I might have been fired on the spot. So. That's true. You know, yeah, I, had look, like, I, had look, I had a little clout by that time, though. I had absolutely. a little clout. You know, you got to you know. Because I, I didn't like my music. I And everybody, the, the like, if I get asked the taker question, my music is always the second question people ask me. Because I outright just did not like that song. I used to stand in Gorilla, and you know how you're back there pouring water on your head? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Pipe, you're getting pumped. And whenever my music would go off, I'd be like, It'd be like the biggest letdown. 
It'd be like the reverse of Blue Chew. <laughs> the reverse of that is, it, that's uh, what that music was. To me. Yeah, my music, it hurt, my, my it hurts music. people's feelings so bad that I hated it. My music always hyped me up, man. I needed it uh, to, to actually uh, do my thing. I think, but keep it keep it rolling, Brad. Your yeah. theme was good, though. I did like your theme. Uh, Ty Marshall says, "What's up, guys?" My question to Maven: When you were told you were going to beat the Undertaker for the Hardcore Championship on SmackDown, what was Taker's reaction? Hope everyone's having a good day. Honestly, um, I think he wanted to just get rid of that damn belt. Like, obviously, Taker at that point, he doesn't need a belt of any sort to get himself over. I think it was more of a pain because during that time he was working. I mean, mean, they're not going to put any of the main guys in a hardcore championship storyline. It's just not going to happen. So he was working guys, you know, guys that were in a bigger position than where I was at the time but still not guys at the top of the food chain. So I honestly, I think he was happy to get rid of it. I think he was just ready to be done with being the hardcore champion at that time. He could not have been more gracious, but hey, and it was fine with me. Like, obviously he wasn't going to take a pinfall with my drop kick. That's when the rock (laughs) had to come out and rock bottom him. So, which I understood. Hey, bro. I understood. A win's a win. A win's a win. Hey, absolutely. It's in the record books the same. Oh, yeah. That's right. There you go. Uh, Our next one comes from our friend Callie Tonell. What's up, Callie? Uh, Maven, are you a regular watcher? If so, what is your favorite storyline right now? And where would you like to see it go? Who's in your fave five? Do you watch the product regularly? Nah, no, at all. And this is, and here's why I've said it before. And I I think it hurts wrestling fans that I don't watch the product, but it's like, to me, I don't want to see my ex-girlfriend, the love of my life, walking by with her new boyfriend, doing better. Hey, Maeve, this is, (laughs) this is Bobby. He's so much better than you. I just don't want to see that every day. And it just, it literally, it hurts like to, like to watch because uh, you know, obviously, I miss it, like we were talking about earlier. And obviously, you know, I just I feel like there was more I had to give that I'll never have the chance to, you know, to fulfill. And it's just it's tough. You know, that said, I am happy that the guys are making the money that they're making nowadays. I hope they're taking care of their body. I hope they're taking care of their finances. And I wish them all nothing but the best on all three on you know WWE AEW and Impact. I wish them nothing but the best. Yeah, so, man. What well, I me mean, if any of them were to call, would you pick up the phone? I'm I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm gonna I'm never <laughs> gonna I mean I'm never gonna like say no to an opportunity. You know, I, I but then again I I don't see it happening. I mean I just I don't like it's just for whatever reason. I mean I don't think consider myself an asshole but like I, I never, I, I never even got the call to do like a Royal Rumble spot, and I would have thought at some point maybe you know they'll you just throw them, throw me in the Rumble, and it never happened. I pissed somebody off along the way, book. Well, hey man, that, that, not, not I'm going to say though, I'm going to say though, that, ring. go ahead, go ahead. That, that that little plaque behind your right shoulder, that maybe it might get you that phone call. You know what I mean? It might get you that phone call. Yeah, you know, might get you that Rumble spot. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get, get in where you fit in. Yeah. I'd, I'd, have bought, yeah. I'd have bought one years ago then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You get, the, you get the rub, kids. You get the rub. You yeah. know, keep, keep it rolling, man. Okay. Um, this is from the Will Meister. Maven, the other day I watched your match with Matt Cardona from a few months ago, and you said you're no Austin or Booker T. You look just as badass and was funny as them to me. Oh, man, that was, uh, I was doing Cardona, Cardona, like, obviously he's still doing his thing on the Indies and he's probably bigger now than he's ever been. And for, you know, it's funny whenever somebody tells me like, you know, I was such a fan of yours, you know, when I was growing up, I'm like, listen, I'm not, I'm not my favorite wrestler. So don't tell me I was your favorite wrestler. (laughs) And, but for Cardona, like, I actually believe it because, you know, he's, Like he knew, he knew more about, you talk about, you don't remember your matches. He knew more about my stuff than I did. And so just years, like him and Brian Myers really at my lowest point, like they really helped me just get my foot back in this business. 
and like I like I'd literally lost everything book and I was working in a bar uh, bouncing and they just so happened to come in. I like literally my lowest point. And, and the, at the time of my life, when, you know, somebody recognizing me for wrestling, like I, I, I dreaded that because I didn't want people to correlate where I'd been to where I was as at at the time. Yeah. And, you know, just, they, they literally, they got me some, got me some work and, you know, put me on their stuff. And yeah. So when he asked me to, to wrestle him in a match, absolutely. You know, it's the same way I said, yes, a second after you asked me, the same with him. Absolutely, man. Well, hell, man, we got a show coming up next month, and uh, you need somebody to sell hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know you never know. You know what I mean? Uh, you know you might get the itch. Oh, we got any more super chats, man. Get any more super chats. Yeah, yeah, we do. This is from our uh, New South Wrestling. Says Booker is a great human being and a good brother. I, I want to support my good brother. Still working on that castle show, brother. I appreciate that, man. Man. Yeah, most definitely, man. I appreciate you guys down there too at New South, man. I went down there. We had a, such a great time. Uh, me and my main man, Manny Ice. I I echo. Oh yeah. I echo his sentiment. I echo his sentiment. Book, you are. You're a hell of a guy. You really are. You know what? I appreciate you saying that, man, because it's been a lot of, you know, words said over the internet, and and I need you know people like you to. Back me up as far as I, I I I don't feel like I was a a bully or anything like that, right? Not at all. Not um, at all. I wasn't one of those guys that was trying to keep the young guys down. Not at all. I wasn't one of the guys that was you know uh, uh, spewing you know how how uh, how bad the business was back in the day or anything like that. Not I, at all. I, I wasn't uh, um, one of those guys that you know uh, that was passive by any means. Not book. You were great. And if there was anybody that you could have been, uh, you know, and I hate the word bully, but we'll use it. If there's anybody you could have been a bully to, it would have been me when we wrestled our singles match that first time. And you weren't. I mean, you know, what was it a was it a I don't want to say, you know, a tough match. Yeah. But for televised matches, that's what was pro that that's what was demanded. You had to go out there and work hard. Yeah. Or you weren't going to be on television for long. And yeah. like I said, the moment we went through Gorilla and I come up to you and I'm like, because I was just so terrified to do to, to not give someone with your credentials a good match. And the moment I was like, hey, was it OK for you? And literally you, your smile, you beamed and your your boy, oh, dog, man, it was great, dog. And like <laughs> literally. And I'm not keep book. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you I had a good Christmas break, knowing because if I if we would have had a bad match, yeah. like I'd have been just worried. I'd have been literally sweating bullets the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you treated me, you treated me fairly. I listened to you. I did what you you know told you know, said to do, and you gave me a fair shot. Anybody that says anything otherwise, that's why I hate the what Bob, you know, the way Bob people view Bob. Bob gives everybody a fair shot. And you know what? Some people aren't gonna live up to 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 Bob's, you know, expectations. Yeah, that's yeah. life. Man, that's yeah. life. It, that you know is what? life. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't have, you couldn't have said it better. I, I'm serious. Uh, I know we got some more super chats, Bear. We're just gonna have to keep them rolling. We'll just you're gonna have to edit. Yeah, yeah. We just got <laughs> a, a couple more, a couple more money. Waiting. Got you. This is from uh, Kelly Tony again. Maven, any hot chip slash wing challenges in your future? Man, I'm not a. I, I like to test myself, but not when it comes to uh, not when it comes to 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 eating. Yeah, because I know what the I know what the next day looks like. And yeah, no thanks yeah, on that. Exactly. Yeah, nah. yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this comes from uh, uh, Andrew, who said, "Maven, you wrestled Masada on Heat." Did you know he became a deathmatch legend in Japan? Well, I I, I didn't, um, and I don't remember that match. Again, I book. You're probably the same. I have people, fans coming up all the time, reminding me of matches I have, and I'm just like, sure, okay. I don't remember my catalog of matches. Um, you know, obviously some, a few, like the one with you. I obviously remember, you know, the bigger ones, but that one I don't. I'm glad I could give him the rub, though. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> no, nah, man, I'm that same way, man. I don't remember, ma- remember matches at all. Uh, and like you say, only the big ones. I remember being in those yeah. steamboat, you know, perfect stuff like that. Those yeah. matches, you know, Ric Flair. I remember those matches like like it was yesterday because right. those were my, you know, the heroes, the legends of wrestling, you know. And I was like, wow, you know, I can't believe I'm in here actually doing this. I think that's still and and really, really of uh, the, the certain matches that 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 I remember. You know, they had to have touched me in a certain way, and I had to have been working my butt off. So. Uh, every match was uh, like a, another role for me. I was getting the script and I was going out there. Right. And I was going to try to make it the best I possibly could, you know? So for me, it was always um, like, I, I say it still today. It was just work. Yeah. <laughs> just work. Yeah. We got any more super chats, Brad? Yeah. Yeah. We got one more from Maven here that came in. This is from the Will Meister again. He said, I remember oh. getting a copy of WWE shut your <laughs> mouth, booting it up and going to the teams and seeing a pre-made team called Booker T Maven. Were y'all ever a tag team? Well, we know y'all tagged once. Yeah, that one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah we t- and we got a, we got a big win too. We got a, we got a yeah, we got a huge win. Uh, Book, I watch I watch that match every night before I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like what? A, I mean, what an odd pairing. I mean, me yeah. And- Matt Hardy and Mark Henry. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? But, you know, there again, uh, for me, it was always about getting the script and, and yeah. going out there and, and making the best of that night that I possibly could. I never have looked at this business anything other than me going out there and performing it and try to perform at the highest level and give those fans what they paid to see, which is, you know, a show they want to have their imagination you know suspended for a moment uh when they leave the house and come into those arenas so for me that's that's what it was all about i was a, i was that um kid going to that kung fu movie and leaving ah, i swear i want those those kids to feel you know so it was a hell of a ride for me man well you 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 asked earlier uh if you were a guy that took liberties and my answer was no i'll do you one better you never was a guy that half-assed it I don't care if it was a house show. I don't care what it was. You were one of those guys that were going to go out and you were going to give everything you had every match. I, every, I don't care what town it was in. I appreciate and, it. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know, I, I, I'm serious, man. I really do. Uh, I work. I, I love that, that that game, man. I love wrestling, man. I love performing. And all I was, you know, being was just that, that kid. Uh, that my sister and I used to be like at Christmas time and Thanksgiving. We used, we, used, we used to be like the clowns. We used to dance. Yeah. And, but, you know, we had a dance routine. And that's all it was for me, man. I found a way out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I found a, a way out of this this thing called life. And I, and, and I said, when I got into wrestling business, I said, man, they're going to have to kick me out. I'm the, yeah. I was like, I, when you get paid to do this? Well, yeah. How much? I was like, okay, I'll be here. I'll be here. You know what I mean? But uh, it was an opportunity, uh, an opportunity of a lifetime. I told Brad when he first started working with me, you said something earlier about it. Um, and Brad came into my office and he had that boot fun hairdo, right? And he looked like he got rosy cheeks because I think he had something going on. He just had some kind of seizure or something, right? <laughs> 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 he tried, palsy, but it's okay. He's like yeah, <laughs> 18 years old, right? He's like, you don't yeah. want to get I want to get into wrestling business, you know. And I told him, well, look, you know, you look you're a good looking kid, but there's no money in this, okay? But it's <laughs> I say, but it's <laughs> but it's a lot of opportunity, you know. Boom, he's like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> freaking my partner there, man, and we go around yeah. the world. Man, so opportunities knock, man. You got to know when to take them. You got to know when to absolutely you know, go and take that that knock, man. Know when to pick up the phone and take that call, man. Just like you did, you picked up the phone, took that call to step inside the Hall of Fame, get your champagne wishes, caviar dreams, man. And I just want to, <laughs> I want to thank you, man, for uh, coming on with us and being a special guest host um, here tonight, man. And uh, get your socials out there, man, and let everybody know. Um, where they can find you and whatnot. Yeah, and obviously, thank you guys for having me. Uh, book, I'm I'm a fan of what whatever whatever you're a part of. I'm a fan of. I will be making it out to the uh, the new Coliseum here here shortly. Brad, it's been an p- absolute pleasure to uh, to work with work and stare at your hair for the last hour and a half. <laughs> uh, find me YouTube Maven Huffman. My name Maven Huffman. No Booker and I are not related. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm on YouTube, Maven Huffman, and on Instagram, same thing, Maven Huffman. That's it. Oh, yeah, man. We put with... videos out every Friday at noon, so expect one tomorrow. I don't know what is coming out. I'm not a part of the editing team, but, yeah, it's having fun with it. Hey man, hey man, you're doing a hell of a job. Just keep keep up the good work, man. Just keep up the good work. And uh Yo, okay. I'm gonna ask you to be on the I'm gonna ask you to do a video for me. So Bro, be ready for here, that. Just, look here, look here. I'm always available when I'm available. Yeah, that's you can, why I love you. You can use that's that one. You can, you. Use that one right there too. But uh <laughs> guys, uh, uh go to go, uh, make sure you check check out the uh the Twitter. We're gonna be announcing the winner. Of the contest, someone will be coming to Reality Wrestling in December for our big Christmas chaos show. Looking forward to making you a, 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 a honorary, honorary VIP member inside uh, the arena, guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, always, like I say, we we love you, uh, Bradley. Uh, for all the heavy lifting, for all the heavy. You look like your shoulders got a little bigger. For all the heavy lifting, bro. I appreciate you. <laughs> but uh, right now, peace. We love you. We out.